classes and all that kind of stuff and teach calibration. So today we're going to worry about, pretty much just worry about single nozzle and square root calibration. And the reason we're only going to worry about single nozzle is because of the time element. If we have time, we can branch out into formless jets and actual boom bars and contractors as well. So we know calibration does a couple different things for us. It tells us how much herbicide we're going to put in our spray tank. It tells us how much we need to buy depending on the size of the job and the acres that we want to survey for our weeds. It tells, it tells us how many acres of weeds we're going to spray per acre of land. And those acres is the land that we're spot treating. Uh, it tells us how much water we're going to need for the mixture to cover an acre of ground we're doing. Uh, what speed to drive the tractor or move our hand, our handgun, or when we backpack and how fast to walk. Is a variable and we'll change the change of calibration if that speed doesn't stay steady. And it makes sure that we're following the pesticide label. Any pesticide label that you read is going to give you a rate per acre. In a homeowner scenario, it might be a rate per thousand square feet, but they're all going to give you a mixture rate for water. We'll say minimum of 10 gallons to the acre, maximum of 50 gallons, etc. Et okay? So you want to make sure you're in that range so that you're not putting down too little. Okay, so single nozzle sprayers, come back here. Single nozzle sprayers might include a pistol on a hose sticking out of a tractor window, a backpack, a garden jug from Walmart, anything where the, the fluid is coming out of a single jet or a single nozzle. That, this calibration will work for those kind of sprayers. So whether we're spot treating or covering the entire area with a blanket spray, we need to know how much water we're putting on. That water is generally measured gallons per acre, okay? To calibrate our single nozzle sprayer, we're going to use what's called the 1128 method. And that, that number will make, us, make sense to you in a minute. But you can Google that up. The University of Wyoming has the 1128 method online. We're going to reverse those steps. And so this time of year, you can do it indoors. You don't have to do it outside. You don't have to move the sprayer, the tractor, or anything like that. We're going to reverse steps. So we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need a water source. We're going to need our weed sprayer. We're going to need a measuring cup, a bucket, a tape measure, and a way to mark four corners of an 18 and a half by 18 and a half area. We want to make sure that area is in an area devoid of vegetation so we can see our spray pattern on the ground. Just using water, so like I said, if it's on the shop floor, that's okay too. But generally, you'll go through the first part of the steps and then move outside. Practice spraying that area until you get consistent. That's that's the rate that you'll carry out in the field. Okay. So some basic stuff. We're going to make sure our sprayer is clean and not leaking before we start any of this. And we're going to determine how many gallons our spray tank holds. Oftentimes, <coughs> ATV tanks are going to be around 14, maybe 24 gallons. Backpacks are going to be two, four gallons, depending on which buy. Little garden jugs or one to two gallons. Maybe the old tractor sprayer, the three hundred, <coughs> might be two hundred gallons for the handgun hang out. Okay, we need to know that volume. And the reason we need to know that volume is we want to make sure that whatever whatever rate, whatever gallon per acre we decide to go with, we want it to be divisible by the tank volume. Right? We don't want to mix one and one fifth acres of chemical or one and seven sixteenths of an acre of chemical. To be an IC even number. So if we're dealing with an ATV tank or a backpack, say, it's four gallons, we're going to choose numbers like 24 gallons to the acre, or 28 gallons to the acre, or 32, because those are even numbers of backpacks that will produce an acre of the acre, right? Six backpacks, seven backpacks. We can take that number of backpacks and divide our rate per acre up evenly amongst full backpacks. It's really easy. We just end up with fractions of a backpack that gets more Okay, so evenly divisible numbers. That's what we find out our spray tank volume. So if we like to go slow, if we like to see where we've been, we might choose 40 gallons to the acre. If we hate going back to the house and filling up with the hose every 30 minutes, we might spray a little faster, put a little less water down, and go with 24 gallons to the acre so that backpack travels a little further. Right? We don't have to come back quite so often. Either way, whatever we choose, 
going to practice it in our 18 and a half by 18 and a half foot area before we ever go out in the field, so we know what pattern to take on the new surface. Okay, so you've chosen your calibration rate. We'll go through an example here. Grab your measuring cup. So we're going to say, uh, if I put an example up there, we're going to say you chose 24 gallons. You're going to pour 24 ounces in your measuring cup. Okay? 24 ounces in your measuring cup. You're going to take that measuring cup and you're going to pour it into a bucket. Then you're going to mark where the water line is in that bucket. Then get rid of the water. Okay? After you've done that, so we're down here to this spot. You've got a mark inside of a bucket that does not have any water. Well, that mark is reflecting 24 ounces of water, right? The time that it takes to fill that uh, up to that mark with your, with your sprayer is going to be the time that you have to spray an 18 and a half by 18 and a half area. It's as simple as that. I'll tell you why it works out that way. So if I choose 24 ounces as my rate, 24 gallons to the acre is my rate, measure 24 ounces, pour it in the bucket. Market, pump that water out. Turn my stopwatch on. I start pumping my backpack and spray it into that bucket until I reach that mark again. When I stop my stopwatch, that's how much time from that point forward I have to spray an 18 and a half by 18 and a half foot area for as many times as it takes to get that pattern down to even coverage, corner to corner, without missing a lick of it. Which means I can take a crew of 20 people with all the backpacks on that all want to walk at different speeds and move different cases, and I can make them all spray the same rate. All I have to do is measure that area and mark them out and say, you all have 16 seconds to spray that. Practice it until you get it right. And everybody gets to mix the same. Okay? So, does that make sense? Probably doesn't, but it will after I get on the next slide. So the reason that works is because we're doing the 1 one twenty eight method, right? That fraction. An acre is 43,560 feet. One 128th of that acre is 340.3 square feet. If we take the square root of that to get a dimension, right, an outside dimension, we get this number. So we just make it easy and use 18 and a half feet. So 18 and a half feet by 18 and a half feet, if I was to draw that on the wall, on the square, there's 128 of those little squares in the square acre. Okay? Now we shift over to gallons. How many ounces are in a gallon? 128. 128, right? So if there's 128 ounces in a gallon, that means one ounce is one one twenty eighth of a gallon. So now we're dealing with 18 and a half by 18 and a half inch square. It's one one twenty eighth of an acre and an ounce, which is one one twenty eighth of a gallon. So if I count the number of ounces that live that land in that 18 and a half by 18 and a half, it's the same as the number of gallons that would land in an acre because they're both equal parts and they're bigger parents, right? Ounces are 1 one twenty eighth of a gallon. A little square is 1 one twenty eighth of an acre. I'll have to scale them both up 128 times and I'd have gallons and acres instead of ounces and 18 and a half by 18 and a half. Okay? That's why we use 1 one twenty eighth method. So, that, that explains all that. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So since we're using that same fraction, like I said, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we'll just scale it back up. Uh, you can think of it this way. I wrote this down because it makes sense to me. You can say that one ounce applied over that 18 and a half by 18 and a half foot area is the same rate as one gallon per acre, right? If one ounce lands in that little square, ounces in a gallon, with one gallon will land on an acre. Of course, we're going to be able to walk on the volume if we get one gallon per acre. It's going to run on that okay. So if 40 ounces were applied over that 18 and a half by 18 and a half, what's my calibration? How many ounces? If 40 ounces were applied over my measured area, 18 and a half by 18 and a half, what's my calibration per acre?
remember the ounces are the same as the gallons per acre. As long as we're spraying that 18 and a half by 18 and a half area. 40 gallons. 40 gallons. So 40, 40 gallons. Yeah. 40 ounces in the little area is the same as 40 gallons on an acre, right? So once we know what our calibration is, all we have to do is figure out how many tanks it takes to achieve that. And we know how many times we have to slice up that per acre rate in our backpack or ATV or tractor tank. Got a 40 gallon tractor tank, simple, put one acre of product in there and go, right? We've got a 400 acre per gallon tank. We know we've got 10 acres worth of water in there. We may not have 10 acres worth of spring. So we know that every time we put 40 gallons of water in that tank, we're going to put an acre worth of herbicide in there, right? Whatever that herbicide says, seven ounces to the acre, or two quarts to the acre, depending on the product. Every time you would put that number in your tank in gallons, dump that many ounces of the product calls for for an acre of weed treatment. It allows you to go out in the pasture with a 200 gallon tank, maybe only tree to half an acre of weeds on the ditch, and not come back with a whole bunch of stuff you've got to find a place for later on. Okay? Okay. That's deviating from the words, but I like the way that. So, the thing to remember again, as long as we're dealing with 18 and a half by 18 and a half, one one twenty eighth of an acre, the ounces that land in that 128th of an acre are the same as your gallons per acre. And that's why we reversed it. You get to choose that number in the living room and then go out in the garage and pour that many ounces in your cup, pour that in the bucket, mark it. However long it takes you to spray that mark is how long you have to practice spraying your 18 and a half by 18 and a half area. Instead of going the other way where you spray your 18 and a half area first and you time yourself, and then you go in and spray in the bucket and you measure it and it comes out with some funky weird number 18.75 ounces and your tank is 14, gall 14 gallons big, right? So you're dealing with one and one fifth tank. You don't want to do that. So we, we do a reverse. Pick the number first, pour it in the cup, put it in the bucket, mark it, spray it in the bucket. That's the time you got from that point forward to go out and practice in the parking lot. Sound simple? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's try an example. John has a new ATV sprayer that holds 14 gallons. You look at the tank, it says right on there, it's embossed in the side of it, and it has a handgun. What's the first step after we make sure the sprayer works and doesn't leak and all that good stuff? First, first thing he does is he wants to choose a rate, right? So he wants to make sure that it's divisible by what? He wants to make sure that 14 is going to divide into whatever gallon per acre he puts down, right? If he chooses 28 gallons, that means it's going to take two tanks to do an acre. If he chooses 14 gallons, it means he's going to, every tank's going to treat an acre, right? So he wants to make sure it's an easily divisible number. So John chooses 28 because he's got a 14 gallon tank. So he grabs that measuring cup and he dumps 28 ounces in the cup, okay? He then pours that 28 ounces into a bucket, and we use the bucket because we got some pressure there. We don't want to try and squirt into a little cup. It's going to go everywhere. So he pours his 28 ounces from the cup into the bucket, he marks the bucket, and he dumps the water out of the bucket after he's marked it. He gets a stopwatch ready, and he times how long it takes him to spray water into that bucket back up to the mark, and it takes him 25 seconds. That's all he needs to know, right? What's he do after that? Goes out to his little patch and practices 18 and a half by 18 and a half. And he practices spraying that bad boy for 25 seconds until he gets it completely covered in a nice even fashion. And once he gets that done, he knows his sprayer calibration is what? 28 gallons per acre. 28 gallons to the acre. That means one tank covers how much ground? Two acres. How big's his tank? Oh, 14 yeah. gallons. It takes 14 gallons, right? Okay. Yeah. His calibration is 28 gallons per acre. And a half an acre. Half an acre. Oh, yeah. Yep. So half an acre. That means that once he knows that his ATV is doing half an acre, right, it's going to take two tanks to do an acre, he can look at any chemical label that he buys from the weed and pest from the feed store where that list says this weed, this much per acre, 
It's going to take half that amount for it in the bank over time. And every time he does that, and sprays the same uniform pattern he was getting on his 18 and a half by 18 and a half foot area, he knows that he's putting out 28 gallons of water and one acre of product every time he goes through that. Even if he drives 10 miles of private road and just squirts the ditch every once in a while, when he gets all done spraying two tanks, he'll know that 10 miles of road had one acre of that noxious weed in there, one acre of the product is going to be missing out of his bottle. So, we're going to try and mix up a couple of tank loads for him. He's got that 14 gallon ATV tank. He's going to use a product called Weed Master. Okay, we know it's Weed Master because it says it up at the top. It also says that his listing number is a rate per acre. That's what we want, right? So, he's got some leafy spurge he wants to control. We see that leafy we read the label, we see that leafy spurge is on the label right there. You see, we've got a range here. If it's a flowering plant, it's going to require three pints to the acre. If it's full leaf, it's four to five pints to the acre. So we've got to know a little bit about conversions, right? How many ounces are in a pint? How many pints are in a quart? Two. How many quarts are in a gallon? Yeah, so we know there's 18 pints in a gallon. We know that a gallon is 128. So if you don't divide that by eight, you need 16, ounce, 16 ounces per pint. Okay. Okay. So we know we need, if it's flowering, we need three pints. So for how many gallons of water would we use up three pints in our calibration from our example? What's an acre of water for this ATP square? What was that? Sorry. How much how much water are we putting out per acre with? Is ATV square, but we just figure out on the dates we What was our calculation? 28, right? So if we need three pints per acre, we need three pints for every 28 gallons of water we spray out, right? Our tank is only half of that. So if we fill the tank up, how many pints are we going to put in that tank? With this rate? 48. You're going to do half. Right? Yeah. It's half an acre, so half of three pints. So 24, 40 ounces. Right? The high end, if it was full leaf, going dormant. The low end, if it was full flower. So we're taking that rate, that per acre rate, and we're dividing it in half because our tank only covers half of an acre because it's only 14 gallons. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Let's try another week. How about. Musk missile. So musk missile, we've got rosette and bolting is about the only time we can control that stuff. It's telling us two pints. How much goes in the tank? Twelve ounces. How much? One Eight. pint. One pint. Half, half of the load, right? That's the acre load. Two pints per acre. We want to cut it in half. Sixteen ounces. Each tank's going to do half an acre. So one pint, sixteen. I will jump down to Spotted Napoli. So we're putting in, let's say, two and a half pints per acre. Two and a half pints per tank. Yep. Now I'm going to change it up on you a little bit if it's not on here. What if my tank was. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to stay with the same calibration, right? Just use less water. Well, no, we're, we're doing the same calibration. <laughs> Who says we have to fill the tank up? Come on, Bob. We're doing the same calibration. <laughs> 14. Yeah, we got 14 gallons, two and a half acre right now, right? So we've got 28 gallons per acre. Yep. That's our calibration. Oh, okay. So 28 gallons of water is what it takes to treat an acre of weeds. Our tank holds 42 this time. So we know that it's one and a half acres in that tank, one and 
not make what you want. So we know that if that's the case, and it's treating one a full tank is going to treat one and a half acres as a bigger tank. You take that rate per acre, multiply it by 1.5, that's how much we're going the whole time. Well, the let's say we use uh, maybe spurge. Well, let's actually use musk thistle and rosette, two pints. So two pints per acre. We have a tank that's doing that holds 28 gallons plus another 14 gallons, right? So 14 gallons. So we're going to put five pints. We're going to put two pints for the first acre for the first 28 gallons, right? Yeah. And then another two pints for the second. There is no second. Oh, there's only half. There's right. only half. So I three, thought it was two and a half. So three, three pints. Okay, yeah. Well, Sorry. two and a half pints in that case. Yeah. Three pints. Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So if that tank was on the back of the tractor, it was a PTO, and it was a 200-gallon tank, which was feasible. Yep. Well, we calibrated at 28 gallon because we weren't thinking that we didn't pick any evenly divisible number. How would we figure out how many acres that tank does? Do your same thing. It's really, sim it's really simple. So we've got 200 gallons of water. We know that every three acre requires 28 gallons of water. Yeah, so divide that by 28. By 200 by 28. We did that. We know how many acres or in that, that tank, tank is going to hold for the product. See the rate at the top of the page. Let's say it holds, uh, let's say 200, 28, that'd be six point something acres, right? So we're going to take that number, multiply it by whatever it says for pints, and that's how much goes in the whole tank. When we're all done spraying, we treated six or seven acres, we used up six or seven acres of product, put up 200 gallons of water. So as long as you remember to keep those numbers even, fractions. Yeah. And if you did come out with a weird calibration and you didn't want to change that, let's say you, you like 28 gallons to the acre, you like the pattern of leaves, and that's where you want to stay, then all you have to remember is every time you put 28 gallons of water in that 200 gallon tank, you put two pints of the product in, or four pints, whatever it's called for per acre. As long as you have the same speed. As long as you, as long as you calibrate the same speed, On a tractor, the PTO pump, the same RPMs and all that, correct? Whatever whatever sprayer you're calibrating is the one you keep the pressure the same and yeah. pump them. If you set the tractor at 40 PSI and that's it, you spray it straight into the bucket with your timing, then that's how you spray within the field. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit confusing, but it's simple. It's real simple if you think about it. You're just taking one one twenty-eighth of an acre area. Counting the ounces added in that square, it's the same as gallons per acre. From that point on, all you have to do is figure out how many tanks or what part of the tank is going to cover an acre of ground. You look at the label, put that much product in the tank. It's for the same pattern. Okay? Alright, so. <laughs> I thought I thought that I did. Yeah, so so what I did is I maybe I did this wrong, but so I run uh, T Jets, the eight zero 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 ones, uh, the yellow ones. Yep. And I just went off of their chart on what to uh, for gallon per acre. Okay. So uh, I just make sure that I run the same RPMs and the same pressure, and then I track my speed. Okay. This year I'm buying one of those uh, Spray Master computer systems for. It will auto track my speed and put down some gallons of acre for no matter what how fast I'm going. Sure, the flow rate will change. Yeah, yeah, speed. yeah, okay. yeah. The spray, I guess it's called spray mate too. Okay. So, so if you're if you're calibrating a boom bar, 
we'll say it's got, it can have 10 nozzles, it can have 50 nozzles, right? It doesn't matter. We calibrate the boom bar, we're only going to use one nozzle. That seems to blow everybody's mind. Okay? But it's the exact same method that we just did with the single nozzle sprayer. So we're taking one fraction of an acre, one twenty-eighth. All we're doing is instead of leaving it as an 18 and a half by 18 and a half area, we're changing it into a rectangle that's only as wide as one nozzle and as long as it needs to be. So if I've got same nozzles area. that are spraying in 30 width pattern. If, you're, if your nozzle spacing is 30 inches wide, then of course it's crossing the bottom, so yep. we call that 30 inches. Yep. You're going to make it right instead of an 18 and a half by 18 and a half area, you're going to make a 30 inch strip that covers 340.3 square feet, just like the 18 and a half by 18 and a half. It'd be like me taking this table, cutting it into six inch strips, and putting them end to end. Yeah. The table surface is the same square area, or it's the same surface area. It's yeah. all we're doing. We're making a long run skinny instead of a big square. So that means what? We're still dealing with the same fraction. Yep. So as long as we know how many ounces land in that strip, we're going to know how many gallons our tractor's putting out per acre, right? Yep. So how can we do that? How can we collect that water? Bucket. <laughs> Bucket. But so what do we need to know? How long it takes. How long it takes. What's going to determine how long it takes? About what? <laughs> you know, what's going to and be speed. The speed. You're going to have to pick a speed, right? Pick a speed. So once you pick a speed, then you could do some math where you can just hang on to this cheat sheet I'm about to give you. Oh, cheat sheet. From the handy folks at the university. Thank you, university. And this cheat sheet shows you, don't look at the first column that says W. This cheat sheet shows you the distance that you travel at a given speed across the top. The rest of those numbers are how many seconds it would take. I don't care if you're on a horse, on a camel, or in a tractor. If you wanted to go 102 feet at four miles an hour, it's going to take you 17 seconds, no matter what vehicle you're in. Okay? Yep. So the W chart on the left-hand side, that's your not that's your nozzle spacing. So you got to make sure they're all the same. You said those the w are those are in inches. Yep. Okay. Right. So if you're looking at, in your case, uh, 30 inches is how wide your nozzles are. All you have left to do is pick a speed. We want to go as fast as we can go across the field within reason. Because if we go two miles an hour and we hit a ditch and we slow down to one mile an hour, we double our chemical on the field because they burn the grass. If we're going five miles an hour, we hit a ditch and we slow down by one mile an hour, we didn't make that big of an impact. We didn't double the chemical. Yep. So if we can get up there around four or five miles an hour, it's a lot safer bet for speed variance. So we've got 30 inch spacing on the coupe. We want to go five mile an hour. We go across our chart and it shows it's going to take 19 seconds to do that. So if I didn't have this chart and I took a 30 inch strip of land and measured, I would have to measure out uh, 136 feet. And that would be the same area as my 18 and a half by 18 and a half. Then I'd actually have to drive it. <laughs> you, well, you could drive it and spray and then go fill your tank back up, see how much you used. Yeah. Or, because you know the time, uh, what did I say? 19 so, seconds. Yeah, 19 seconds. You can hang your bucket right underneath that one jet. Collect all the water for 19 seconds, pour it into your measuring cup, measure the ounces. The number of ounces is the same as the gallons per acre. So hold the bucket underneath there for 19 seconds, you capture 20 ounces of water, that tractor at five miles an hour with those jets is putting out 20 gallons to the acre. If your tank is 200 gallons in size, you know you've got 10 acres of spraying that you can do if you fill that up. If you don't have that much spraying to do, you know that every time you put 20 gallons of water in there, you put one acre of herbicide in there with it and come back with an empty tank every time. If you've only got a half acre, you put 10 gallons of water in there, half of the prescribed per acre rate and go spread, spot treat until you're all done and come back with an empty tank. Okay. Okay? Does that make sense? Yep. You you understand why it does that why you don't need the whole boom bar? Yeah. No. Because they all should be they're all jetted the same. So well they're all jetted the same and they're spaced out 
if we use the whole boom bar, we could. What did we do to our long strip of land? We just pretty much took it and Turn turned it sideways. Degrees, right? Yeah. So now instead of needing to drive the tractor, in theory, My 80 foot 136 or... feet, we need to drive the tractor 30 inches yeah. with all the jets on it. It'd be the same amount of water. Oh. Which so would you be... just go Yeah, and, and a lot of jets, buckets. And you'd still be missing, <laughs> you'd still be missing 20 gallons, 20 ounces of water. Yeah. Right, you move that far, 50 jets, 20 ounces is gone. Or you figure out that long strip and you leave it under just one for 19 seconds and you catch the same amount of water. You're just taking that 340.3, one one twenty eighth of an acre, and turning it into a rectangle from this direction. Here's the direction. It's the only thing you did. That's why one jet works. That's why you can do it right in the shop and never move the tractor. And I don't okay. have to turn on all the things. <laughs> you know, well, they'll, they'll probably all come on. <laughs> Well, I've got selectors, so we're in good shape. Yeah. Okay. So the only thing you got to remember with the boom squares, too, is to take a measuring cup and stopwatch. Five seconds. Stick that cup underneath each one while they're on it. Make sure they're within five percent of each other. Make okay. sure that they're all about the same amount. You got a clock screen or something. Yeah. So that changes the amount of herbicides coming out of the crop. Yeah. Whatever the no killing, burn strain. Or something. Yeah. Okay, so what are those jets? I've got, I've got more slides about these. It's just a lot easier for me to explain those two because it's a little different. So these are boomless jets. You just throw a broadcast out. You can use them in sagebrush and not bend your boom bars. A lot better for rangeland spraying as well. Please use. Okay, so we know that the area is 43,560 feet, right? Yep, that's me. So, Let's just use the whole acre of these boomless jets because we can't capture the water. It's shooting out there pretty good. <coughs> we wanted to know how far we had to travel to treat an acre. And I know that this sprayer is throwing out 14 feet per side. I turn it on, it leaves a wet mark on the ground. I measure the wet mark, it's a 28 foot long wet mark. How can I figure out how long I need to travel? So just like with the boom sprayer, you take instead of 18 by 18 for your usable acre, you uh, figure out your square, like you go 18, and then you take that all and shove it into a length wide instead of a. You are doing that. We're doing the whole acre with the boomless jets, right? Okay. Instead of doing that fraction, we're doing fractions with boom bars and with single loss. Okay. One one twenty eighth of an the same gallons per acre. With the, with the ATV sprayers, it's tough to do because they just kick water out freely. They don't shoot it straight down. Right? So we're just going to leave it on a whole acre. If we take that 26 foot wet line that we left and we divide the area of an acre, 43,560 by 26, that's going to give us a rectangle that's an acre of land, right? Yep. So if I buy a square lot that's 204 by 204 feet, roughly an acre. I want to turn it into a rectangular lot. That's all we're doing here. It's the same amount of land, right? It's just only as wide as our wet spot. It gives us a distance. So once we have a distance, we pick a speed, then we have the time, right, that it takes. So going on with this, we just divide the area of an acre by the spray width that we find by turning on our jets and finding that wet mark and measuring. So in this case, we'll call it 26 feet. We come up with 1,675 feet. So we know that 26 feet wide by 1,675 feet long is an acre of ground, right? We're not gonna measure that with a tape. That'd be impossible, at least in my world. So we're just gonna cheat a little bit. We're gonna take a tenth of that number. We're just gonna remember that it's a tenth of the answer, whatever we come up with. Zero on the end of it. We end up with 167.5 feet to measure out, right? Well, now that we know that, let's pick a speed. When we measure our area, all we're doing is put the start point and a stop point, remembering that it's one tenth of the total. Okay? So we're going 
get our ATV out, run about level ground, and we fill that tank right to the brim, or we fill it to a spot where we can mark it with a marker. Okay? Once we've done that, the only thing left to do is we'll spray that distance, right? So we pick a speed, go to the start point, get cruising up to speed before we cross it, we kick the booms on, we drive that full line that we just measured, that 167 point, I don't know, whatever it was, point three, okay, one tenth of the total distance. And we shut it off at the end. At the 26 feet wide. Yeah, so 26 feet wide was our example. Roll the ATV out of the shop. This horse would just throw his jets. Well, if you do a tenth of the one side, that would do be two point six feet. Well, if you do, yeah, so if you didn't do one tenth, 26 foot wide by 1,675 feet is made for the ground. Right. Nobody buys a tank measure that long, so I'm just doing one tenth of that distance now. Whatever my answer is, it's only a tenth of the answer. It's going to tack a zero on the end of it. Just to make it the right measure, 167. This dimension, this width, this length is going to be the same as an acre, 43,560. I can't buy a tape that long, so all I did was take one tenth of it to come up with that number, which is reasonable. I'm going to measure that. I'm going to start and stop that many feet. I drive past it with my ATV after I filled out the feet. Either filled it to the brim or filled it up and marked where the water line is. Get going, we'll say, uh, oh, where do I go here for a speed? Anywhere from three to five miles an hour, but we'll use four miles an hour for an example. So I'm crossing the start line, I kick the booms on at four miles an hour, and I drive until I see my stop. I see the stop, I shut the booms on, I come back to where I first filled up with water because I want that same double spot to mark my tank there. And instead of putting the hose in my tank, just put the hose in my measuring cup and count how many ounces or gallons that I'm putting back in my ATV tank, knowing that that's really only a tenth of the water I would put out. Right? Yeah. So I go down my line, I spray it, come back to the barn, get my hose out, my measuring cup, and start filling it up. And I find out that I'm putting two gallons, I sprayed out two gallons in that little ATV ride. It's a really 20 gallons. So it's 20 gallons. So 20 gallons, of, if I have a 14-gallon ATV tank, is that an even number? No, no, if you divide 20 by 14, you come up with 1.7 acres or some weird number like that. So I've got a decision to make. I can either deal with that and just fill up 20 gallons, put one acre of product in, go with that, or I can adjust my speed to get a better number, right? I just change my speed and say, okay, I'm going to Try five mile an hour and see if I can get this thing down to 14 gallons to the acre. Or I'm going to cut my speed in half and see if I can get it up to 28 gallons to the acre. Okay. So we're not doing a one from 28 at this point. We're actually driving one tenth of an acre or whatever fraction you decide, coming back and measuring how much we sprayed out on the ground. Remembering that it's only one tenth or one fifteenth, whatever you decide to do to make the distance easy to measure. Consistency there is your jets, your pressure, and your speed. Any of those things change, so it's your calibration. So you buy a product you read fast, and they say, this stuff's going to kill napweed all day long at seven ounces to the acre. And you go out and calibrate your sprayer at five miles an hour at 20 PSI, and you get a bunch of moss in the screen, and you go back out and try to do the same job the next day, and you're only putting out half the water. I really putting out three and a half ounces of milestone. It's not going to kill you now. Okay? So there's variables. There's, there's uh, three items cannot change with calibration changes. Speed, pressure, and nozzle size. Okay. Okay. All right. Those are the three basic sprayers. We'll go through these slides now. So the same question I had before. 
make sure our tank volume plays a role in our selection for our calibration. No matter what, ATV, tractor, backpack, spray, it doesn't matter. If you know the size of that tank in the spray coop, you want to make sure you choose, you choose a gallon per acre grade where it evenly divides it. So how big is the tank on? 200. 200? Yeah. Okay, so it's if you... Team, but I go up to 200. Okay. So if you, if you have a 200 gallon tank, you just want to make sure you're choosing 20, 30, 40. Yeah. Right? So like, with our outbound, so I, the whole reason I bought it is because I've got 380 acres around everybody outbound. And I get, we put on like 10 gallons of the acre for an outbound for outbound. So I get 20 acres out of my tank. Sure. But the problem that I come up against is uh, I've got pivots. So that makes it a little bit complicated to try to figure out when you're going to run out uh, chemical. So last year was the first year of me having said spray tube. And there were multiple times I ran out the center of the field right. that I realized that I got done screwed up. So. Yeah, so using GPS is going to help? Yeah, I, I don't got that yet. <laughs> I'm still running off the phone. You don't have, you don't have too much on your spray job. You know you're, you've got a pivot out there, so you know your acreage. Yeah. You know your calibration. And you, know, you know that it's a 20-acre pivot. By golly, when you fill that tank up, the whole thing should be done when you're done with it. Yeah. Over, you come back, and you still got a third of the pivot left to do, and you're out of product. You know you overlap too much. Yeah, yeah. It's not part of the calibration. That's just a matter of Straight line, yeah, straight yeah. Seeing foam from 45 foot away in the movie yeah. as everybody makes it sound sometimes. So, um, from a simple standpoint, in an economized vehicle, tractor, spray coop, whatever, ATV, if we're going five miles an hour, we're putting out 20 gallons to the acre. That's our calibration. Doesn't matter what the tank size is. And I decide, because I read the label and it says, hey, if you want to kill this weed at this stage of the game, it's really late in the summer, you need more water, you need bigger droplets, you don't want it to evaporate. You're gonna have to put down 40 gallons to the acre. You find that in the label. How could you change your calibration without having to go back to the shop? You're doing five mile an hour at 20 gallons to the acre right now. Change your speed to two and a half mile an hour. Yeah. Cut your speed in half and double the water, yeah. right? As long as you understand that, you know that once it's mixed, you're also doubling your chemical. So if you're going to make that decision to change your speed, that's a different mixture in the tank. You don't do that after you've mixed. You do it when it's empty. Yep. Right? Okay. Because in your case, that tank went from treating 10 acres, or in the case of milestone, 7 ounces per acre of milestone for that week, that's 70 ounces of milestone. You cut your speed in half, now your tank's only doing 5 acres. Yep. You put 70 ounces of milestone on 5 acres, and now you put 14 ounces on the ground instead of 7. You guys have any questions? You can ask plenty. The single miles is what I wanted to focus on. Just remember that 18 and a half 18 by 18 and a half area represents one one twenty eighth of an acre, and you just need to know how many gallons or how many ounces you want to spray in that area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's so how much, that's how much time you have to, to treat it. Is how long it takes you to reach the mark in that bucket. No matter what kind of sprayer it is, if it's coming out of one nozzle. It's the same calibration. <coughs> okay. That's pretty slick. Pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I hate to admit it, but I got a piece of paper here. Real Wait, similar to calibrating a grain room. You can go through those examples and we'll come right back to you. Yeah. What's that? Real